How's it going everybody? This is Cameron White with White Light Astrology giving you guys your June 2019 horoscope for Scorpio, Sun, and Rising. Thank you guys so much for being here and liking and sharing and commenting and subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you guys. We're starting June off with the new moon in Gemini, which is happening on June 3rd of this month. And this new moon is happening in your eighth house. Now, I've, I've been, I say this in like literally all my videos, I can't say this enough, but a new moon is when you have both the luminaries in the same sign. It's bringing attention and bringing light and focus into one area. And it's giving you energy to, you know, kind of level your head a little bit, you know, reground yourself, uh, reset your intentions in this area. And with the sign of Gemini, this, you know, involves things like communication, getting better ideas, having, it's kind of like writing notes for, you know, before a test or in, when you're in the middle of a lecture. That's very Gemini type stuff. However, like a new moon in Gemini is kind of like resetting the intentions with our ideas, with our thoughts, with how we communicate and how we kind of bring information in and out. Now, this is happening in your eighth house, and the eighth house is a very tricky house. It's a very weird area. The eighth house not only rules death, it rules uh, other people's money, what other people own and possess, inheritances, uh, you know, transformation, uh, things that you're going to go through that... It's, I don't know, it's kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird area to talk about, but what I want to hit on with this new moon in the eighth house, because, you know, you have a new moon here literally every year, and a full moon here literally every year, and it's just the lunation, it's not the biggest deal in the world here. However, with this new moon, I want you guys to really look at what information are you receiving that you haven't had yet, that has come in from the dark, that is coming from a hidden area, that is coming from someone else's, you know, stuff, what information, what new ideas are you receiving from this area, and where can you get a better understanding and a better, a better like, having a better level head around that area. Now, as we move forward on June 4th, we're going to have Mercury enter Cancer, and this is going to enter your ninth house. Now, Mercury, the planet of communication, our mindset, how we think and how we vocalize our thoughts is in going into the sign of cancer, which is about emotion and empathy, trusting, being vulnerable, protecting and nurturing. And as Mercury goes into the sign of cancer, the way that our thoughts, the way that we kind of vocalize and express those, it's going to be more focused on like saying what needs to be said, focusing on what needs to be, you know, addressed, what needs to be protected, where do we need to be more vulnerable and more open. And as Mercury goes into your ninth house, this is really going to reflect, or I should say bring uh, more focus on ninth house qualities or uh, topics such as spirituality, philosophy, uh, religion, higher education, far distance travel, foreign languages, publishing. And so as Mercury goes into Cancer in your ninth house, this is going to be a time where, you know, more of your focus is going to be what do you need to grow into? What do you need to learn? Where are you more focusing your mindset on nurturing yourself and protecting yourself? And how is, you know, basically the way that's going to go is through those ninth house qualities of like higher education, being more connected to your belief system, whether that's a religion or spirituality, maybe learning something new, going somewhere far, and so on and so forth. Now, as we do move forward on June 8th, we're going to be having Venus enter Gemini. And this is where things will get pretty interesting. Venus, of course, the planet of love and relationships and connection, wanting to bring things together. She wants you to indulge and have a good time. Venus going into the sign of Gemini, she's looking for mental stimulation. She's looking to learn new things and socialize and connect to bigger groups of people, more people, more, you know, like not necessarily just like friends or groups of people, but things that are fun and energizing. Now with Venus entering your eighth house of death, you know, other people's money, taxes, inheritances, this could be a big focus on, you know, like the eighth house is also debts. So this could be a time of, you know, maybe repaying off some debts, focusing on where can you bring in more value and maybe learn something new and express more value in this eighth house area. And the eighth house, you know, does have a little bit to do with like change, transformation, nightmares, growth. And as Venus goes through Gemini and goes through your eighth house, this is just going to be a good time to kind of adapt yourself to that and kind of go, hey, what's working right now versus uh, like vers versus what's not working right now? What am I enjoying right now? What's catching my interest right now versus what's not catching my interest? But as we move forward on June 12th, that's when we're going to have Mars conjoin the North Node and uh, Mars opposed Saturn. This is a pretty big deal because as Mars has been in Cancer where it's in its fall and it's not working too well, 
And, you know, where Mars wants to be assertive and take action, it's in the sign of cancer where it's like it just has to protect itself at this point. It can't it can't really, you know, be offensive. It has to be defensive. As Mars hits the North Node, while the North Node's also in cancer, this is kind of that time of kind of pushing the button and kind of going go. The North Node is Rahu. It's the dragon's head. It's what we're hungry for. It's the direction that we're going in. And as this is in Cancer, where we're talking about, you know, what what our needs are, what we need to protect ourselves with, this is in your ninth house of spirituality, of religion, far distance travel, higher education. And as Mars conjoins the North Node right here, this is kind of like taking that assertive action on where do you need to defend yourself and where do you need to protect yourself in this area? And where do you need to start taking more action on the areas that you need to with this? Like, do you like, you know, do you need to go back to church type of, you know, energy? However, as Mars opposes Saturn, Saturn is now, you know, still in Capricorn, it's next to Pluto, next to the South Node, retrograde. As Mars is opposing it, it's going to feel like you know, you don't have as much control over the circumstances in this case, but you kind of have to take what action that you have. Like, you may not have a lot of whole options of what you what you can do, but the ones that you do have, you've got to take it. And even though the limitations and the power struggles can be a little bit out of your control, you have to take what small amount of control you can. And that, you know, comes back to protecting yourself, nurturing yourself and focusing on what your needs are. Now, as we do move forward into June 15th, a couple days later, that's when we're going to have Mercury conjoin the North Node. And while the North Node's in Cancer, you know, we just talked about that, it's kind of like Mars hits the North Node and it's like acting on that, you know, shoot first, ask questions later type energy. And as Mercury hits the North Node, this is getting a better image and getting a way more clear visual on what those needs look like, what getting those needs met looks like, what the you know reality of it is, what the imagery around it is, understanding it more and kind of just having it work through your head a little bit better. As Mercury is in your ninth house, this is going to be a time of maybe wanting to expand yourself, learning more, and this is on top of the North Node, so this is very compelling in a sense. However, this is really where it's going to come down to understanding and seeing what your needs are and understanding that you're taking that step towards that. But also on June 15th, we have the full moon in Sagittarius. And this is pretty important too, because after we are focusing on, you know, like we may not have a whole lot of options, we got to focus on the basic necessities. This full moon in Sagittarius, you know, it's kind of like writing the new story. What the new moon is when you have both the luminaries and the same sign focus on something. When you have a full moon, it's lighting up an axis. It's lighting up a dynamic. And it's showing, it's lighting up what you don't always see. And this is happening in Sagittarius, the sign of beliefs, the sign of, you know, spirituality, philosophy, you know, excitement, uh, optimism, positivity. And this is happening in your second house of money, of resources, of finances, what you physically own and possess. So this is going to be positive in the sense that, you know, this full moon is going to be lighting up like, hey, you've got money. Hey, you've got the things that you need, your you the physical possessions that you own, everything's doing good there. And that's going to be kind of a counterbalance with Venus and uh, transiting your eighth house as well as that new moon in your eighth house. However, I think this full moon is going to be exciting after we get off this really gnarly Mars and Mercury opposed Saturn stuff. And this is just going to be a good time to look at what's next as far as moving forward goes. But then as we move forward on June 21st, we're going to have the sun enter cancer. And this is when, you know, the solar qualities, the light comes up into this area. This is what we can see. This is what everything's gravitating around. As the sun goes into cancer, again, focusing on nurturing what we need, what we want to protect, what we want to feel, trusting, being vulnerable, being open. Those are all trigger words for you, Scorpio. I know I'm hitting you on that. But as the sun goes into the ninth house, this is just about bringing more light to where can you grow into? What do you need to you know, learn? What do you need to discover that's going to help nurture you more and to protect yourself more and to give you more of what you need? But also on June 21st, we're going to have Mercury enter shadow. And I'll be doing a Mercury retrograde later, a uh, Mercury retrograde video here in a few weeks. However, once Mercury enters shadow, this is where you're going to start to see, you know, you'll eventually come back to whatever's happening on June 21st. Mercury is going to be at the later degrees of cancer in your ninth house. So maybe this is a miscommunication or maybe some type of error or some type of menial problem in that ninth house area that you will come back to. And I want to emphasize on that because we will be coming back to that, not only in the Mercury retrograde video, but next month, uh, next month's horoscopes as well. Then 
Uh, the last thing that's really going on in June is on June 26th, we have Mercury entering Leo will it, where it will station retrograde. And Mercury in Cancer is like saying what we need to say, but Mercury going into Leo is like saying what's on our hearts, expressing what we're passionate about and what we, you know, feel, what's real for us, what we can see. And as Mercury goes into Leo, it's going to be going into your 10th house of your career, of your public vocation. It's at the top of the sky. The whole world can see it. And as Mercury will eventually retrograde right here, this is going to be important to look at because as Mercury does go into your 10th house, you'll be a little bit more vocal, a lot more, you know, mercurial action is going to be happening in your career, in your workplace, and you may find yourself in a miscommunication or an error along the lines of, you know, what you do within your career, your boss, or anything of that nature. And that's something that we're going to talk a lot about in next month's horoscopes. But that's what's June, that's what June is looking like. It I'm not going to lie, it's definitely a rough month. That Mars opposed Saturn is going to feel, ugh, it's going to feel very constricting. But I wanted to stay positive in this monthly video because this month is focused on our needs. Like, we can't focus on the things that we want to do. We got to focus on the stuff we need to do this month. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this and liking and sharing and commenting and subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you, and I'll be seeing you next month.